Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another garden update. Trying to get the hang of this microphone still. Trying to see, maybe I'm too close, maybe I'm too far away. I don't know, I'm working on it. So thank you for your feedback. I really do appreciate it as always. Uh, getting into another garden update, taking a quick look around. Things have really been growing like crazy. I ain't even kidding, like this stuff, I can't even keep up with it. I took a lot of time and I went through and I pulled out all the weeds. I know. Ugh. Uh, if you've been around, if you've been on this channel for any amount of time, you know that pulling weeds is not something that I do. So you you must know it must have been really bad for me to go out and pull weeds. Uh, most of it really wasn't weeds. Most of it was just that really tall, really nasty Johnson grass that's invasive and blah blah blah. I don't know. Nobody wants grass in their garden, even me. Anyhow, I devoted an entire day's garden work, uh, which equated to about a few hours, to just pulling out the grass. Everything is looking so good. It's been so warm here, really. Everything is just right on target, so I can't complain. The dahlias are finally starting to grow. A lot of these dahlias are the ones that I ordered from Eden Brothers. A couple of them are the ones that I talked about before that were kind of disappointing, uh, but they're finally starting to, you know, get bigger and grow. Uh, I'm going to be pinching these out pretty soon so we can get some nice bushy plants. In addition to that, the gladiolas are growing like crazy and pretty soon I'm be, I'll be willing to bet that uh, they're going to send up some flower spikes starting pretty soon. Uh, things, things like the watermelons are finally starting to get some pretty good size on their leaves this year in the garden. I really want to grow some nice pumpkins and some nice watermelons. Last year I grew some pumpkins, but they kind of got just like lost in the sea of food. And so I didn't find them till the end of the season when I, you know, cleaned everything out. Some of them were rotten, a couple of them were good. Uh, but this year I want to really focus on trying to make sure that the pumpkins don't get lost and that the watermelons do not get lost. Um, that's, I mean, I like to plant this real high intensity garden, but that's one of the actual, the downfalls to it is that, you know, things tend to get a little bit lost because there's so much stuff growing above them. I don't know. Uh, the watermelons, especially, and things like cantaloupes, especially don't seem to compete well with other crops. So this year I gave them their own individual space in their own rows and uh, hopefully they'll grow well. The variety of watermelon growing this year. Of course, I have a moon and stars. Love moon and stars. Uh, I like the foliage. I think it's interesting. Uh, I like the rinds, you know, with the little splotches all over. I think it's it's an interesting novelty thing. Plus, they taste pretty good. In addition to the moon and stars, I also have a um, some Carolina Cross seedlings out here. Hopefully, we can grow some nice big old melons. Um, of course, it would be easier to just grow some little small melons, but hey, go big or go home, right? Uh, I think it's really fun to just try to grow large produce, um, even though technically I'm just one person, so at least if we're successful, I have a lot of melons to share. In addition to the melons, the beans are looking really well. Uh, if you remember, I thought I had a problem with striped cucumber beetle. Well, I mean, I did have a problem with it. Um, and I was thinking about spraying something. I actually went to Home Depot and got something that I was going to spray. And then I went out to spray it. And all the cucumber beetles were gone. I don't know. That's not a thing that's happened to me before in the past. Uh, but they were all gone. So I'm not going to complain. I didn't have to spray anything. But if they return, I'll be ready for them this time. So the beans are looking good as well as the cow peas. These cow peas are actually growing really fast, and I think it has to do with the variety that I got, the variety of cow pea that I got this year. I think it's called Northern Lady. I think it's more specifically suited for those people up um, further north, and I guess I've, I'm considered further north in terms of cow peas, I guess, because they're a, they're a very southern thing, ain't they? I don't know. A lot of our flowers that we started from seed early on in the winter sowing containers are starting to bloom now. The status is uh, really starting to bloom, thinking about blooming. In addition to the status, thinking about blooming. We also have uh, some snapdragons thinking about blooming, which is exciting because um, if you've been here for a while, you know that I'm a complete failure with snapdragons most of the time. Uh, hopefully we'll get some pretty flowers with those. Additionally, all my petunias that I started from seed have started to bloom. 
the petunia I'm growing this year is, I think it's called Daddy's Mix or Daddy Mix or something, which is kind of an odd name, but it's really pretty. It's uh, shades of purples and pinks and kind of the pale pinks, uh, that type of thing, uh, looking really good. Also, also, before I forget to mention it, I mentioned last video that the biennial flowers are starting to bloom. Well, so here's this, here's the story. Last year, when I started my biennial flower seeds, I started some Canterbury Bells seeds. I started the Canterbury Bells seeds in containers. They germinated. Things were looking uh, really good. Uh, about a week before it was time to transplant them out into the garden, a snail or cutworm or something had gotten into the container and completely leveled them. I had no Canterbury Bells. They were completely leveled. Uh, I said, oh well, you know, it is what it is. I can't do anything about it now. I didn't plant any Canterbury Bells. So in the fall, uh, when I was covering things up for the winter, I noticed that there was this one plant in my black plastic way across on the other side of the yard. I wasn't quite sure what it is. I thought it might have been a big weed, but I just decided to leave it alone and see what it would do, see what it turns into. So I would know, you know, like if it was a weed, if I see it again, I would know to pull it out. So that, that clump stayed super green all winter long, um, and I was just like, what is this thing? Uh, so springtime runs around, it starts getting taller and taller and taller. I was like, man, I can't wait to see what this is. It's probably like ragweed or something, because, you know, I, I let weeds go to seed all the time just because I want to know what they look like, because, hey, uh, some weeds are actually flowers that you didn't know you wanted. Does that make sense? Probably not. Anyway, I let this thing go to flower, and as it turns out, there is a huge, almost five foot tall Canterbury Bells plant blooming in the yard right now that I did not plant. I didn't plant this thing. I didn't throw seeds for this thing. I have no idea how this thing got to where it is, but it is, and it's beautiful. It's so tall. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna call this a success. This is my first Canterbury Bells plant, which is awesome. Is it Canterbury Bells? It is Canterbury Bells. I get Canterbury Bells and Cathedral Bells, the vine, so confused. I was trying to grow Cathedral Bells again this year, by the way. All the seeds germinated in their containers, and then some kind of cutworm or something got in there and ate every single one of them. There was like 20 seedlings, and they were large seedlings, and just devoured them. So if I try Cathedral Bells again... I have to cover them with insect barrier. But anyway, Canterbury Bells, that's what we're talking about. I'm sorry, I get on these tangents. This thing's huge. It's gonna be exciting to keep watching it bloom. I'm so excited. In addition to Canterbury Bells, uh, the pansies are really starting to dial it down now that the weather is hot. Additionally, I grew foxgloves for the first time this year. Um, I'm not really impressed with my foxgloves. They're really small. I think it has to do with where I planted them. Uh, this spot that I planted them in isn't very good. It's not very rich. So that was probably my fault. We're going to try again next year. Remember, always be careful with your cut flowers because a lot of these are very toxic. And you want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to keep your kids and your pets safe and everybody like that. I know I'm like the safety patrol. I know I say it all the time. But uh, gardening is supposed to be enjoyable. And and you shouldn't have to worry um, if you have certain types of people or pets. So really it's best to just use your best judgment and common sense when you're making that call in terms of, you know, what you should be planning. It's always best to research everything first. With that rant out of the way, uh, I wanted to show you guys the sweet peas real quick. These are the sweet peas that we winter sowed in our bottles back in January. They're doing absolutely great, even though the weather has been blazing hot. Uh, the thing about winter sowing sweet peas where I live is that they're not going to get very tall. If you want tall sweet peas, um, I'm here in Kentucky, I'm like zone 6B7. If you live somewhere that it warms up really fast in the springtime and gets really hot, um, you're going to want to try to overwinter sweet peas if you're able to, if they are cold hardy enough for your zone. Ideally, I would overwinter my sweet peas to get them nice and tall. I just started these in the two liter bottles you know, wait back in January and they are just barely big enough to bloom and produce some really pretty flowers. So that's one of the things that's so frustrating when people try to grow, you know, sweet peas for the first time and they live somewhere hot, planting them in the spring is sometimes they never even get to the point where they bloom. So I'm really happy with the way these are doing uh, enough sweet peas for, you know, a couple little cut flower arrangements and things like that. So I'll be enjoying those. Not to mention the fragrance is so nice. 
Anyway, uh, things like uh, the corn and the cucumbers and the tithonia and the tomatoes, they're all getting pretty big. I'm really happy with it. Overall, I think we're on track to have a pretty good season. That's about it for this update. I hope that it was somehow helpful. I'm not quite sure if it was. If it was, uh, be sure to subscribe. I would absolutely love to have you make new videos on the regular. If you do subscribe, be sure to hit that little bell icon. Um, YouTube, you know, sometimes they don't tell people about my videos and sometimes they rearrange the order of the videos so you might not see mine. I don't know. They just do whatever they want and and I guess hopefully if you want to watch my video you'll find it. I don't know. Uh, be sure to share it. All that good stuff. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. I don't think we'll get there but we're going to try uh, making new videos on the regular about gardening and flowers and soap and all kinds of just uh, random stuff. I hope y'all are having a real great day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye guys.